Hey, Blue Ant people. Uh, I, wrote, I wrote some stuff down, sorry. I, know, I don't usually do that, I usually wing it. But this time I thought, you know, it's important. Not that the other ones weren't. Um, so the first thing that uh, you have to understand is that my wife, who's a 27th generation uh, Edmontonian, doesn't uh, understand about my race and culture. Uh, <coughs> trust me, I'm freezing. Um, so, I'm going to be blunt, uh, I, I hope I don't, uh, it's not a buzzkill, but I'm going to be blunt. I've worked in and around the media and entertainment industries for Canada for my entire career, and I've seen my share of discrimination, including racism, all over the place. At the top of the ladder, uh, I've knocked on the door of the secret white man's club that runs our industry only to be told that the roti shop was next door. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Uh, <clears throat> I've seen uh, applicants many times not hired for fit reasons, where the only fit issue seemed to be race or culture or, or religion. I've seen women paid less than men for the same job. I've seen people of color and women consistently shut out, sh shut out of boardrooms in the C-suite. You know, I've been far too many times, not here tonight, thankfully, but far too many times the only person of color at industry events or at key meetings in the industry. This is a fantastic feeling that I don't get very often. Uh, I'm gonna give you one example, another example. A few years ago, my then business partner and I were meeting with a senior industry executive. We, asked, we were asking for his advice on how we should how we could better deal with a major media and communications company in Canada with whom we were having no luck. He looked at me and my partner uh, and he said, well, for starters, you should go to the meeting, you should stay home. He was pointing at my white partner and telling me to stay here. Uh, it turns out, unfortunately, sadly, that this was actually good advice and it was the advice that got the job done. <clears throat> I have, for most of my life, been known to customer service reps and barristers at certain coffee shops as Roger Connor. <laughs> Roger Connor? Roger Connor? Uh, I stopped correcting them years ago. Uh, but, on a side note, I, Roger Connor sub subscribed at least three times to the Columbia Record Club in the 80s. <laughs> and my parents still get collection notices addressed to Roger Connor. Um, <clears throat> all of this, and I'm one of the lucky ones. I was born here, I don't need to think about visas or immigration status, I don't have an accent. You start talking about Ernie Coombs and, and uh, Mr. Dress Up, like the white people's hearts will melt, and then you go in and attack. <laughs> and you get, you get your deal done, just like that. You heard it here, that's your tip. Um, <clears throat> So I'm almost done, sorry, uh, sorry, I'm going. Uh, so, so what have I done about it? What have I done about all this? I've seen it, I've witnessed the mainstream system, uh, which is one solution. It's one way to do it, is to just kind of avoid it. Uh, through a combination of sheer stubbornness and good luck and amazing mentors, I built businesses that were successful enough, at least, that folks had to pay at least a little bit of attention to me. As I helped build those businesses with my colleagues and partners, I recognized the logic and power of having a diverse management team. Not just in terms of race, but in terms of gender and color and culture and religion. All these things uh, are important. If, you know, we're, nobody, it's not perfect. I recognize the industry's challenges, but at least uh, I try, at the very least, to reflect the powerful diversity of our customers in our leadership. And then, I guess, perhaps the mere fact that I'm another CEO in our industry from a racialized community uh, is in itself helpful and transformative since it proves to many of you that it can be done and you are our future leaders. <clears throat> and the last page is missing. No, it's not, it's all good. Uh, it's the last page. Um, <clears throat> I know these guys are like, come on, come on. Uh, but these, these are incremental steps. These are small things. So well, we're headed in the right direction. Uh, problems our industry faces. I make a difference to policy, to best practices, to structure across the industry that we can't do it alone, that we have to 
partner with other independents, we have to create some form of leverage, some sort of critical mass. So, organizations like Real World have done such fantastic work for 15 years. Congratulations, that's amazing. Uh, should work with solidarity, with, with solidarity with other inclusion-seeking organizations to have an impact on this, our Canadian media system, and to challenge the barriers of inclusion faced by people of color, women, and Aboriginal peoples, to name a few marginalized groups. There can be no real equality without working together and coordinating.